Good, ap good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the LP Gas Propane Cylinder Live Meeting Webinar. Um, my name is Norm Winningham, and I'm with FEMSA, also known as the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration of the United States Department of Transportation. I'm a hazardous material compliance investigator with our agency, and I conduct compliance inspections as well as train our agency's inspectors and investigators. Today's live meeting will last approximately 20 to 25 minutes with approximately 10 minutes of question and answer, and we'll cover some details regarding propane cylinder safety and why this is an important safety topic for users of propane cylinders. I'd also like to ask that if anyone has a question during the meeting, as our facilitator has indicated, Please take, a, take notes uh, of that question during the presentation, and we'll, uh, we will attempt to address any of those questions and concerns that you may have at the end of the meeting. I would also like to emphasize that the ultimate goal of this live meeting webinar is safety. For those who use portable propane cylinders as part of their business to cook foods, fuel vehicles, or heat spaces, by understanding the importance of maintaining propane cylinders, that you're using in your business, it protects you from significant harm in the event of a cylinder failure. So with that, I'd like to uh, start by discussing some of the objectives uh, that we're going to talk about during this session. I want to introduce you to uh, safety concerns related to propane cylinders as it relates to the testing and requalification of those cylinders and also identify DOT cylinder markings and briefly discuss their meanings because it's critical uh, as propane cylinder users that you understand uh, what those markings mean and the manufacture dates and the test dates uh, that we're going we're gonna to cover. So that, that's a very important aspect of uh, propane cylinder safety. The most common uh, propane cylinders that you're going to see as the illustration on the screen uh, shows are the most common types, and these are used in and around various businesses. Uh, you will notice that some uh, of these cylinders are small, and others are moderately large in size. Uh, these cylinders are considered low pressure by our agency because they are intended to be operated at pressures less than 900 PSI, or pounds per square inch. And in most cases, these cylinders would typically never exceed 4 to 500 PSI during their use or uh, service pressure. This is known as the service pressure, and this is marked on these cylinders. I will show you this marking in a future slide, and we'll have some illustration and some pictures so that you can uh, visualize that on the screen. It is also important to understand that the, the, the term low pressure does not mean no hazard or no harm. These cylinders possess a very serious amount of compressed energy and hazard depending on the types of products and operating pressures. Propane, due to its very nature, is very flammable. And when things go wrong, it is a very deadly situation to be involved with. At this time, I do not want to get into the technical meaning of the codes noted on the slide. So as you see here on the slide, DOT, 4B, 4BA, and 4BW. In general, this just means that this is a DOT specification cylinder built to a particular design. And in general terms, it just means that this is a steel cylinder that it has either been welded or brazed together. And the different codes just determine the technique and the way that that particular cylinder was put together. So we want to understand some of the markings and codes that are on these cylinders and also talk about uh, the, the reuse of these cylinders. The majority of propane cylinders are authorized to be refilled and used multiple times when certain conditions are met and they are within standard and properly maintained. DOT specification cylinders used to transport LP gas in commerce must be requalified and or recertified 
12 years after their original manufactured date. So I want to say that again. They must be requalified and recertified 12 years after their original manufactured date. And depending on the method used for requalification, every 5, 7, or 12 years thereafter. And we're going to discuss uh, what those conditions are and your options as propane users or owners, propane cylinder owners or users, in the upcoming slides. So first off, I want to give you an understanding of what these DOT cylinder markings mean. As you can see on the illustration, at the very top, it says DOT 4BA240. Now, I just mentioned the DOT 4BA basically means that this is a steel welded cylinder. And the 240 is 240 PSI, and that is the service pressure of that cylinder. I also want to point out the manufacture date, which is 11-93. And you can find this information on the top ring of the cylinder. It will be stamped into this ring. So let's take a look at some typical pictures of some cylinders that you may see. And you'll note that it can be difficult to read if the cylinder is rusted or covered with a particular color of paint or if there's some sort of damage to the cylinder. But on the picture, you can note that it says 4BA240. Once again, this is the DOT specification and that particular cylinder service pressure of 240 PSI. So let's discuss some of the options uh, that you have as a cylinder owner that you can follow when requalifying. This picture just indicates that there's a serial number. So each cylinder uh, will be identified by a particular uh, serial number when it's requalified. The next thing I want to show you is the indication of the manufacturer's date. In this picture, you will see 1193, just as the illustration to the left. And you can notice that it's not as clear uh, on the cylinder itself. So let's discuss some of the uh, options with regards to uh, requalifying these cylinders after that 12-year manufacturer's date. One option is the five-year requalification, which, which is for a visual requalification. This is identified by the letter E on the, on the cylinder itself close to the retest date. So as I highlight on the screen, you can see that the manufacture date of the cylinder may be February of 1993. And the retest, in this case, it was a visual because you can see the E indication on the cylinder. This cylinder was visually requalified in 2008. Therefore, it would be good for five years after that visual requalification. So the external visual method of requalification, again, authorizes that cylinder for an additional five years. And there are several ways that this can be marked on the cylinder. But typically, you want to look and see that E indication on that cylinder. And that's going to tell you that it was, it was a five-year requalification. Now, as far as who may perform these requalification, uh, requalification by visual can only be performed by authorized requalifier identification number recipients or visual identification number holders. These are issued by our agency. And I will discuss later where you can look on our website and you can find where those uh, RIN and VIN holders are located in your area. So this is also uh, something that you can find on our website. Again, I'll discuss this uh, later. The pictures on the slide are indicating uh, just some actual uh, cylinders that you can see have been visually requalified. 
Once again, the notation of the E and the VIN number on each one of these particular cylinders can be noted. Again, this is for the five-year requalification marking. The next, next option for requalification is the seven-year requalification, and the markings will be indicated by the letter S immediately following the requalification date. So the letter S is, is kind of the code for knowing that it is good for another seven years after that date indicated. This is done by the proof pressure method of re requalification, and it authorizes the cylinder for an additional seven years following the initial 12-year manufacturer period. So if we look at our, our uh, manufacturer date on this illustration, you'll see that it says 10-1984, and the proof pressure test was conducted in 2001 and is indicated by the letter S on our illustration. Once again, this may be only performed by an authorized requalifier identification number holder. And you'll see that this is different than the VIN numbers or the visual identif identification numbers. So only a REN holder is allowed to conduct the proof pressure method requalification for seven years. This is again also found on the FEMSA website, which I will uh, show you later. The next option is a 12-year requalification. This is indicated just by a date and a REN number notated on the cylinder itself. In this illustration, you'll see the date of 294, which is February 1994. And this cylinder was requalified 6 of 98. And you'll notice that there's no S or no E. Now, this is what is called as a volumetric expansion hydrostatic requalification. And this authorizes the cylinder for an additional 12 years. Now, these tests, uh, the visual, the proof pressure, and then the volumetric expansion hydrostatic requalification, all are uh, different tests that, they, that you have as an option to requalify your cylinders. This particular requalification may only be performed by an authorized REN identification number holder. Again, a list can be found on PHMSA's website that I will show you in a few minutes. The next thing I want to discuss are the potential uh, penalties that could occur if, this, if these uh, regulations are violated. There are civil penalties starting at $250 that could range up to $55,000. And if there is a death, illness, or ser serious injury due to a violation, it could be $110,000 uh, for that violation. These violations, uh, as they relate to transportation of hazardous material, manufacture, fabrication, marking, maintenance, reconditioning, repair, or testing of a hazardous material packaging. And that is what a cylinder uh, would be considered, is a hazardous material packaging. There also can be criminal penalties for violation of these uh, hazardous material transportation laws. Uh, they range up to $250,000 for individuals and 500000 for a company and or five years imprisonment. These were, are, are related to willful violation of the hazardous material regulation or unlawful altering, removal, defacing, destroying, or otherwise tampering with any marking, labeling, placarding, or packaging requirements as they relate to hazardous materials. So where can you find more information uh, regarding these REN and VIN uh, holders for requalification of cylinders? One place you can go is you can type into your browser 
hazmat.dot.gov. That will take you to our home page for FEMSA. You can also find uh, the REN holders or REN, uh, the REN locator in our portal under portal.fimsa.dot.gov backslash REN locator. And this will take you to the website where you can enter your uh, uh, zip code and then you can hit go and it will bring up the REN and VIN holders in your area. Another place you can find information regarding cylinders is our information line or our info center. That number is 1-800-467-4922. They can also be contacted by email if you have a particular question at info cntr at dot.gov. And the hours of operation of that info center is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can obtain answers to HAZMAT regulation questions. You can get uh, request copies of Federal Register, special permits, or training materials as they relate to hazardous materials regulations. You can also report violations, and there's a fax on demand service that is provided as well. So what I'd like to do now is uh, open it up to any questions uh, that our audience may have, and I will do my best to uh, answer those questions for you. Thank you. Thank you. If you